Bible calls the church the pillar, the ground of truth. If we don't talk about these truths on the ground of truth, we're in trouble. Um, I want to speak about errors. You need to know this. There are errors, all right, in the school of divine direction. I want to bring these errors to you as prompted by the Holy Spirit, and then we'll see how we go today. First Kings chapter 13, please. Not 1, 13. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. First Kings 13. I hope you don't mind. We want to read the word of God, 26 chapters. Is that fine? Praise God. You, if you slept last night, let me see your hands. So you shouldn't have any problem standing. Amen. But I, 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 you will not stand whilst I teach. Just to read the word of God is our custom here to stand for the reading of God's word. Uh, somebody may ask, why do we do that? Okay, I think I've stopped explaining. Jesus is the second person of the Trinity and he's called the word of God. So when we give him reverence, we're giving him reverence. All right? When we read the word in honor of him, we're giving him reverence. Because he's both the written word and the living word. 1 Kings 13. So you know how we read it, call and response. I read 13. Let me, let me just go with this. But media, please make sure you're fast. Um, 1 Kings 13. I read one, you read two, I read three, call and response, and then we we'll read 26 together. Is that fine? Yes, sir. After the count of three, let's go. Two, three, go. I behold, and behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel, and Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Next verse, please read. Were you speaking in tongues? And he gave a sign the same day saying, this is the sign which the Lord had spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. Next verse, please read. How many of you like reading Old Testament? Next five, verse 5 is me, right? It says, the altar was rent and the ashes... You know, I warned you that we read 26, so get ready, okay? It says, and the altar was rent and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given, all right, by the word of the Lord. Next verse, please read as fast as we can. The king said unto the man of God, Come with me and refresh thyself. I will give thee a reward. Next verse. For so it was, charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again, but the same way that thou camest. Next verse. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the great man had done that day in Bethel, the words which had spoken, the words which he had spoken unto the king. Then they told also to their father. Next verse. And he said unto his son, Saddle me an ass. And they saddled him an ass, and he rode thereon. Next verse. Then he said unto him, come home with me and eat bread. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, thou shalt not eat bread, nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way thou, that thou camest. Next verse. Next verse. 
So he went back with him and he ate bread in his house and drank water. Next verse. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus says the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mount of the Lord and hast not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee. Next verse. And it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk that he saddled for him an ass to with the prophet whom had brought back. Next verse. And behold, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way and the lion standing by the carcass and they came and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. Let's read 2, 26 together, 2, 3, go. And when the prophet had brought him back from the way he heard thereof, he said, it is the man of God who was disobedient. This is enough for a service, right? Let's pray. Father, in the name that is above every other name, no man can do these things except you be with him. I ask that you cause a sour thing from the, take a coal of fire from the altars of heaven, put upon this tongue. Hence that you make my tongue the pen of the ready writer, ready to inscribe the words of God in the tabloids of the hearts of men. I, I declare that this atmosphere is conducive for the ministry of, word, of, the, of the word of God. I cause discouragement this morning. I sense the spirit of discouragement in someone's heart. I cause discouragement this morning. And I ask that your heart will be open to receive your word for your next level. In the precious name of Jesus, I ask you for utterance to teach your word like never before. In Jesus' name and God's people said. Amen. Please, you may be seated in the presence of God. It's, it's, it's a very huge text that we're, uh, you know, that's why I got you to, I like for the church to understand the context before the teaching of God's word comes. It's important that you understand the context so that once the Holy Spirit or the man of God by the Holy Spirit or the woman of God by the Holy Spirit begins to teach, all right, you can understand where he's coming from uh, because you have an overview of the text. And that's why I got us to read this. I wasn't looking for how to kill time. I don't look for how to kill time when I teach, praise God. In fact, I'm looking for time to teach more. Hallelujah. So in 1 Kings chapter 13, something critical happened here. But before we talk about 1 Kings chapter 13, I want to talk about 1 Kings chapter 12. But just stay with me for a moment. 1 Kings chapter 12, I just want to read the story. Okay, I want to give you the preceding text or the chapter before this chapter. It's going to help you further to, you know, get the nutrients from this text. And so there was a man who was called Solomon. How many of you know Solomon? Uh, you know Solomon, praise God. Who was Solomon's son? Bible students. Who was Solomon's son? Is it Jeroboam or Rehoboam? All right, Rehoboam was the son of Solomon. Did he do, did he do well in the sight of the Lord? All right, so let's, let's just go back to 1 Kings chapter 12, and then we'll come back to 1 Kings chapter 13. So in 1 Kings chapter 12, Solomon had gone home to be with the Lord. And then the people came to his son, Rehoboam, and they said to him, look, look, your father was tough with us. You know, sometimes you wonder, could that have been possible? Solomon, the man of peace. Have you thought about it? He said, your father was, you know, a little bit, you know, and all of that. Should we, the way some of you are looking at me, can we read? First Kings 12. Give me First Kings 12, 25. Let's see it there. First Kings 12. Is it 25? No, let's go from verse 1. Verse 4. First Kings 12, 4. I want you to see this thing so you can understand where the Spirit of God is going this morning. It says, thy father. Who was the father? All right. Thy father made our yoke what? So, am I correct? That Solomon's kind of, his leadership on them, even though he was a man of peace and wisdom, was kind of grievous. So, see what they said to him. He said, now therefore, make the grievous service of thy father. Now therefore, make thou the grievous service of thy father and his heavy yoke, which is upon us, lighter that we may serve thee. All right. No, let's see his answer. And he said unto them, depart. No. 
And he said unto them, depart for three days and then come again to me. All right? And he departed. Now, watch this. You can go back to 1 Kings 13. Now, please listen to me very carefully. All right? So, when they came to him, they said, your father was a little bit tough on us. All right? So, this, this is what we ask you. Just make it a little bit, you know, easier so that we can serve in your kingdom and all of that. And then he said, go. Was it a good thing? It was a good thing. Go and let me seek counsel. So he went to two levels. The first level was that he consulted the old man. And the old man said, you know what you're going to do? Take it easy on these people. They're going to commit to you and all of that. You know, they're going to serve with you and serve you. All right? And the, the Bible says he wasn't, he wasn't, you know, foolishness is inside. Foolishness is like a magnet. If you have wise people around you, it's because there's a seed of wisdom in you. There's a thirst for wisdom. When you have foolish people in your circle, you need to check yourself before you check the people. Something is magneting you to them. He had wise counsel. He was not okay. So the Bible says he went to the young men that were like him. See what they said. Not only did they advise him, they told him what to say. The old men advised him, but the young men told him what to say. Verbatim. He said, say to them that my smallest finger will be mightier than my father's loins. I will deal with you. I will deal with you. And when they heard it, they, the, the Bible says the word was strong and harsh. When they heard it, and Israel, the elders of Israel heard it, they made a very powerful statement that God, in fact, this statement has been my Bible study for a while. It's a huge statement. Look at what they said to him. They said to themselves, rather, when they heard Rehoboam, they said, is there any portion for us in David? No, any inheritance in the seed of Jesse? And they said, depart everybody to thy tent. That's where that statement comes from. To thy tent, O Israel. And Israel scattered. But only one tribe was still submitted to Rehoboam. So they went, please stay with me very carefully. All right? They went and they followed Jeroboam. That's in verse 13 now. Am I correct? There's Rehoboam and there's Jeroboam. So Rehoboam was the son of Solomon, and then Jeroboam began to lead them as king. So Jer Jeroboam was now king. He was leading the vast majority of Israel. And one day, watch this, Rehoboam got angry, and he gathered the armies of Israel, and he said, come, let's go and finish those people. And the word of the Lord came, if you dare it. If, he says, if you fight against your brethren, there's a lot to say from this text. He said, if you fight against your brethren, God said, go and sit down, all of you. They went and they sat down. Rehoboam sat down. Then Jeroboam came up. You know the instruction for Israel is to worship where? Where were they supposed to worship? Was there a physical location they were supposed to worship? Where was it? Jerusalem. That was the divine instruction. That thing only changed when Jesus came. Am I correct? Neither in this mountain, nor in Jerusalem. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? For God is a spirit and they that will worship. So it changed from a physical location to a spiritual location. But before that time was Jerusalem. Jeroboam just woke up one morning and said, watch this, I'm leading these people. But the instruction of God for worship is that these people should go back to Jerusalem. And when they go back to Jerusalem, who will be king there? Rehoboam. So the Bible makes it very clear that he said these people will return back to their king and they will leave me alone and they will kill me. So you know what he did? He erected altars. He said, you don't have to go to Jerusalem. Stay with me this morning. You don't have to go to Jerusalem anymore. Just stay here. Let's worship. He erected altars. From altars, he erected idols. That's why the prophet from Judah didn't speak to, to Jeroboam. He spoke to the altar. I wish I had time this morning to do this. He didn't speak to the king. He spoke to the altar. Because the, guy, the altar was a substitute for the divine instruction that God gave Israel. So do you understand that now? Now you understand why the prophet was speaking. So let's go now to uh, 13. 1 Kings 13. Verse 1. It says, And now, and behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. This altar was not the altar of the Lord. Am I correct? This was a substitute to the instruction that God gave them. Next verse. Help me. It says, and he cried against the altar. All right. Now, before I go further, can I say this? Uh, the, the explanation I just gave verse 12, there's, there's a huge instruction there. Listen to this. Competition and jealousy can make you leave your instruction. 
You see jealousy. I heard one of my mentors say something that is very true. People find it hard to admit to the sin of jealousy. People find it easy to admit that they stole. But to admit that they are jealous, they don't. But have you observed that you can't hide jealousy? Have you observed that in your life? If you've had a jealous person in your friend or in your circle of friends, have you observed that it would, if you accept you, you didn't observe? You know, the Bible says, when God met, uh, was it Cain or Abel? Uh, Abel, Cain, right? He says, why has, why has your countenance fallen? You will observe from the countenance of the person and the workings of this person that this person is com- in competition with you. Now listen to this very carefully. Never forget this. They may compete with you, but never compete with them. People, in fact, you can't stop people from competing. But make sure you are not in competition with them. Competition will make you change your instruction. Jealousy will make you change your instruction. It happens in life. It happens in ministry. So there are many churches who, by re- who have great e- reasons to use um, attend church. And then you leave the place where God, God called you to ministry and he says, I want you to stay here for the next five years. And your mates are getting a tent. And you now force the people to go under a tent. There was a dear friend of mine. Let me call him an acquaintance. He went somewhere to one of his f- bigger friends' church. Is that bigger friend or elder friend or something? I don't know. But his friend's church. And they were sitting 1,200. They were using the capacity of 1,200. So it was somewhere, I won't mention the place because some people may decode. And I'm not trying to slight the person. But I learned a lesson. And then he just went home and said, ah, the place was like this. Quite, you know, not as big as that, small. Ah, no. We must take a step of faith. No, we can't be here. So the next week, he looked for a place that was sitting 1,200. They allowed them to use them for four weeks. One day, something just entered the landlord's head. If you have not looked for church property, you won't understand the battles pastors go with property owners. The guy locked everybody outside. He didn't allow them to enter church. They had to do service in a mechanic workshop. That's what competition does. That's what jealousy does. It makes you leave your instruction. So the guy left the instruction and started carving out altars. And now, you know what? You know how God solves the problem of error? He uses accuracy to solve the problem of error. If there's an error in your life, God will send somebody to bring accuracy. And that's what God sent this man to do. He says, and he cried against the altar, all right, in the word of the Lord, and said, O altar, O altar, thus says the Lord, behold, a child shall be born unto thee. Next verse. And by the way, this thing was fulfilled verbatim, the way he said it. Verbatim, it was fulfilled. Next verse. He says, house of Judah, Josiah by name. But have you observed? Can I say something? Thank you, Holy Spirit. You observe that prophets in the Bible's Bible were mentioned. You have Obadiah, you have Micah, you have, you have Isaiah. You know that. But this one had no name. Can you receive the word of the Lord from somebody who is not popular? Can you receive the word of the Lord from somebody who is not on television? This generation is suffering frustrations because of this. Can God send somebody to you to pastor you that is not what, I mean, <laughs> I was listening to a pastor yesterday. You know, pastors can, when they sit with each other, they can pour out their pains minister to somebody, groom the person, the person was down and out, minister to the person, that's the job of a pastor. Sometimes a pastor will take from his own and bless the person and do things and the guy just got a job in a good place I don't want to mention. And all of a sudden he said that the church is not structured enough for him. (laughs) So he he said going to, there's a church that fits him. (laughs) The Bible did not say pride goes before a fall. It says pride goes before destruction. It's not follow. There are people you look at like this, you know that they're about to fall down. But you just keep quiet. And fathers do that a lot. Ah, this guy, you're about to crash. This guy, you're about to crash. So, they said the church is not, you know, systems and structures and, and all that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know the way it is now. Even, God, even water finds its level. Then you begin to see Proverbs. Water finds its level and things like that. <laughs> but my question to you is that what if God has called that man to pastor you for life? Let me say that one more time. What if God has called that man to pastor you for life? So can you receive the word of the Lord from somebody who doesn't even have a name nor a church name? 
He just arrived from Judah. Just tells you the place. What God must always do is let you know that the person he's sending you is a human being from a geographical place and has a genealogy. Even Jesus Christ is from Nazareth. Amen. If you have a problem from receiving human being as God's gift, you will have a problem from going to your next level. So at least he told us that the man is from Judah. Next verse. Wow. No, I think we, we've done this. The house of Josiah by name and upon it. No, no, no. Okay, yes. House of David, Josiah by name. And upon thee shall all, shall he offer the priest of the high places that born incense upon thee. And men's bones. Next verse. Shall be born upon thee. You know, you know what it means? It's an insult. Hmm? You walk to the king of, the, of Israel minus one tribe. Just one tribe. And you walk up to him. And you walk up to his altar where he was praying. And you just ignore him. And you begin to speak to the altar. Oh, ye altar. Somebody will be born. Something is going to happen to this altar. All the priests are born incest here and all of that. He said their bones will be sacrificed on this altar. And you ignore the man. Are you getting what I'm saying? Uh, you don't get the picture. Is it an insult? Mm. And he gave a sign in the same day saying, This is the sign which the Lord hath spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent. And, and, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. Next verse. Let's make it fast. And it came to pass when the king Jeroboam heard that the saying, heard the saying of the man of God that he cried against the altar in Bethel that he put forth his hand. So he was just angry. Ah, can I have somebody? Uh, no. Some people are too shy to come on Facebook Live. So let me, you know, help them. Praise God. So <laughs> he just, you know, I'm sure he was just fuming when the guy was speaking. What, what nonsense. You, you know why he had the infantry to hold him? Let me, let me tell you, if it were in Elijah's time, permit me to say, permit me to use the broken vernacular, they're no born and well. You understand what I'm saying? Elijah, Elijah just comes to the altar and speaks like this and you put your hand to touch Elijah. This one even prayed for the hand to come back. Elijah will say, we don't die. <laughs> I'm going somewhere. You know why he, did not, he had the impetus to do that? He wasn't a popular man of God. He was this generation is too is too is too IG. Permit me to say that. It's too, it's too, everything is glam. If it's not glamorous, they miss the day of their visitation. And that's what happened to Jerusalem. And Jesus wept two times. The Bible tells us he wept. He says, oh, Jerusalem. They looked at him and he didn't look like the Messiah. He said, For you have missed the time of your visitation. The man was not, he was not on IG. He was not on television. He was not on Facebook Live. His church was under a, what do they call it? Is it Bacha or Shanti? Nothing about him was tech. Can you imagine? Who is this one? He just stretched forth his hands and God showed him. God answered. I want to let you know that I don't think the way men think. I don't operate the way you people operate. And he stretched forth his hand and his hands, hand with her. The same guy that was arrogant began to beg. Let's read it. I'm, I'm walking you verse by verse. Stay with me this morning. This will bless you. Next verse. No. Where he, where his hands withered. Take me there. Bible says, where, where was that? Verse what? Okay. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God. Of the Lord. You didn't hear me. Of the Lord. You know that this guy has gone. This guy's gone. I have also observed something that jealousy and competition will lead to pride. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God and pray for me. He says, Pray for me that my hand may be restored again and the man of God be so. This is a good man of God, you know that? And the man of God besought the Lord and, and the king's hand was restored to him again and it became as it was before. Next verse. And the kings, this is my, uh, now I'm, I'm, I've come to the teaching. Eros, to watch out for, when being led by the Spirit of God. And the king said to the man of God, come with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. See what the man said. And the man of God said unto the king, if thou would give me half of thine house, is this good? And will not go, I will not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread or drink water in this place. Next verse. 
For it was charged me. This is error number one. Don't give the details of your instruction. Don't ever, no matter the pressure. Now there will be there will be some there will be some situations and circumstances where you have to. For instance, you are sitting in counseling with a father figure in the body of Christ, or a mother figure in the body of Christ, or somebody who mentors you, and you are confused as to how to respond to what you are hearing. You can tell the person in trust, all right, what God said in details. Outside that, don't give the details of your instruction. It is not humility, it is stupidity. Every other thing he did was right, but this was the first error. Why? Tony, tell me why I shouldn't say my instruction. It's God that said it. If God said it, no man can stop him. Yes, no man can stop him, but men can stop you. You know why? God fights. The devil sends the enemy to fight your instruction. The enemy fights your instruction. He's, he came to Eve and he said, has God said are you seeing that now? I'm just giving scriptures to let you know that. You see, if the enemy, do you know the enemy is not all knowing? Like some of you think. Home video has finished many of you. You feel that the devil knows what you are thinking. Nah. He has to get info. That's why he has familiar spirits. They stay there, they're familiar with the bloodline and things like that or anything. And they keep wrecking havoc in that lineage. So don't allow the enemy. Oh, don't, not just the enemy. See, do you know, I've discovered something that people talk too much. People talk too much. Somebody, a, a guy just did like this last week. You have gone to tell your friend. He waved. And now you're waving back with your soul and your heart. And then you go to tell your friend, um, I think he's interested. He just waved. Let me respect myself and leave this relationship matter. Okay. For it was charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink, nor turn again by the same way that thou, came, same way that thou camest. Instruction. Was this the details? God is a detailed God, though. God is a detailed God. God can't send you to a city and you don't know where to walk. If he sent you there, he has a place for you to walk. Somebody said God called him to ministry. He reached me some months ago before the lockdown. God called him to somebody I had known and it's very possible. Sometimes the people God called don't look at it. I didn't have many people believe in me then. No. <laughs> My dad just had me in a couple of years from 2012. He has had me teach three times. I flew into his city and I was invited there to speak. <laughs> you know men now. He didn't tell me. He just called my youngest sister. See, we just came to the house. Brother. Jesus Christ, I didn't know he was that loaded. Oh my God. Jesus, he is loaded. He teaches the word of God so far. So my sister sent me a message. <laughs> so when I, read, when I read the message, I said, Oh boy, if you stop believing in yourself, you have hurt yourself. If you stop, because what people, what people are saying, and you stop, if you know what you have, what you have caught yourself from. So next one, he sent me a message himself. It was in another church. He said, um, I perceive that um, your call is strong. For a strong teaching ministry. I want to encourage you. Keep doing what you're doing. I said, ah. you don't understand why that meant so much. If you knew the battles I fought, let me keep quiet. I've not said some things on that dimension. In the battles I fought. How did I get there? Maybe that one is for somebody. Amen. Amen. So be careful with the details of your instruction. Don't just shed it anyhow. Because you know what the devil will do? He will take the details of your instruction and fight you and try to stop you on the premise of the information that you gave. Number two thing you need to understand. Let, let me just. You know, Jesus said, Scripture said about Jesus. 
when he was filled with the Holy Ghost, sorry, and be led, the heavens opened, the Holy Ghost came upon him in baptism, and was led by the Spirit to be tempted by the enemy. When he got into that place, what did Satan say? If you are the Son of God, was that information shown in the previous chapter? I'm just establishing to you that that's what the enemy does. He comes on the premise of what God has said to you. Not, see, if he can get your word, he has gotten you. That's what he does. Okay? So, be careful about the details of your instruction. I didn't say start being secretive and spooky. You know some people, uh, they are, <laughs> you will leave the house. You will even tell the people you are living with where you are going. You say, uh, Pastor said we should not give you the details of instruction. I, I didn't say be foolish. I said details of divine instruction. Let people know where you are going, please. Are you getting what I'm saying? You know, because some people are very wonderful. This is not a license for you to be a snob. I said what God told you, the details. Do you know premature exposure in the things of the spirit has aborted many destinies? And God had to look for a replacement because they talk too much. So that was the mistake. First thing he did correct, he refused the king. It's not easy to refuse the king. It's not easy. The king says, come to the palace, I will give you a reward. Not the reward of a pizza, the reward of a king. And he said no. But he made the first mistake. He gave the details of his instruction. But God saved him. All right? Are you there, sir? So he went, no. So he went another way and returned not by the same way that he came. Was this correct? You know God saved him here. I'll tell you why God saved him. Do you know what I've observed? The greatest threats to your divine instructions are spiritual people. Not people who don't really know God. You see how this king easily let him go? Are you following me? The king just, oh, God told you not to. And he left it. It's okay. Was that what God said to you? Oh, that's fine. No, people are very bold, though. Except I love you. I say, madam, this thing you are doing, watch it, watch it. Ah, no, 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 no. Pastor, God said to me, the moment you say God said to me, I'll ask you again. What did you say? He said, God said, the moment you have said God said, I've left you. Huh? So that's what this king get, said. Oh, God said, oh, that's fine. You go. Now the journey continues. And now there dwelt an old prophet. He succeeded with the king. He succeeded by giving his details to a king. The person who was not so spiritual, in quote. Then he came to a spiritual man. Now dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, the words which had spoken unto the king. Them they told also to their father. And their father said unto them, Where went he? Direction. So you know some people are watching your moves. Where went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. Next verse. And he said unto his sons, saddle me and ask. I am wondering, you know, whenever I read this text, I'm like, what in the world came over this prophet? And I'll tell you what it is. You may not like it as 21st century Christians, but this is high level witchcraft. Do you know what witchcraft is? It's not flying. See, I've said witchcraft. All of you have kept quiet. You have to say, witchcraft is manipulation. You can be manipulated by so-called spiritual people. You must know your grounds. As many as I led by the spirit are the sons of God. So when somebody is bringing a direction by the spirit, you will know it's by the spirit. But if it's not by the spirit, no matter their level, stick to what God has said. And he said to his son, saddle me an ass. And they saddled him the ass and he rode thereon. Matter when, please, I'm sorry to say, let me not speak broken, but it doesn't concern you. What? Why? What kind of zeal? If he used this zeal to carry his own spiritual assignment in his own prophetic days, we would have heard of him. An old man. You said the Bible says he's old. When the Bible says old, old. You know, the Bible will tell you, we're stricken in age. The, the Bible knows how to ex <laughs> explain old age. So if the Bible says this man is old, he was old. But he rode on an ass. Some of you, are you like that? 
you leave your own instruction, you are going about people's instructions and editing people's instructions. And you are the one telling us this person is not correct with his move. This person is not correct with his divine instruction and you leave your own. You are running after somebody who is running after his instruction. And went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. This is actually mistake number two, but I don't want to dwell on it. Okay? This was, this was another mistake. When you finish, you go straight where God told you to return. Bishop Oedipo said in those days, there's a principal that is in the ministry, and he was teaching pastors. When they invite you somewhere else to preach, or to teach, or to minister, as you would put it, when you finish, Pack your bag that you came with, leave the hotel, and go back to your own location. He said, don't stay long. People will start coming for counseling. People will start coming. It has happened to me. In fact, one day I was driving with my wife. If I had finished leaving, I preached in the conference, I left. And a young man came. Is it okay if I go like this? Can I talk? And a young man came. I met him on the way. He said, sir, sir, so, so courtesy now. It was daytime, so I just... Stepped on my brake and I, hello. so I wound down. He came from my wife's side. She was at the passenger side. So, hello, sir. Uh, can I help you? He said, you preached in our church last week. I was so blessed. <laughs> but the guy did not know he was talking to a Balagma prophet. We have been in this thing for a while. I was so blessed. If I would not, I mean, that kind of word, it's, it's hard to come by. It's a lie. It's a lie. They that do wickedly against the covenant will he corrupt with flatteries. Flatteries. So they are telling you, you are, you are there. Oh, praise God. Thank God for the word. <laughs> I knew something was wrong when he began to praise like that. Oh, my God. Please, sir, can I get your number? Mm -mm. Error. Why do you want my number? So you know what I told him? Go to your pastor and get my number. I have finished preaching. My job is done. He is the shepherd of that house. You know one thing I've discovered in ministry? The guest preacher always looks like the most anointed until you become his member for two months. Have you observed that? One day Bishop Dagwood Mills was preaching in a church. How many of you know him? Okay, he was preaching in the church and he said, some of you, there was an interpreter. As I'm here now, you are, you, you are coming to church. You are committed. You prefer me. Some of you will bring big offerings to me and honor me more than you honor your pastor. He said, let me tell you, you are a fool. People are wondering why he's doing that. He now says something. I am a visitor. This one is the one that sits with you. Changes your diet as in the spirit. Walks the road in pain with you. If they arrest you today, it's not me you will call. He was talking about himself. Who will you call? You call the pastor. How did I come about this? When you finish your divine assignment, go back to your location. Stop taking numbers and seeking counseling. When my pastor goes to preach somewhere, somebody says, I want counseling. So I say, no, no, I'm a visitor. Counseling is the office of the pastor. Go to your pastor and seek counseling. That's ministerial ethics. Something I wanted to say, but I'm on media, so I won't, uh, I won't say that. Anyways, and went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak tree. And he said unto him, Are thou the man of God that came from Judah? I think at that moment I would have said, Why? <laughs> Just me anyway. Um, and he said, I am. Nothing wrong with that anyways. And he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. Is this what the king said to him? Hmm? Be careful, though. People who say, you, 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 do you know why this guy disobeyed? Because he respected the guy's spiritual capacity. Don't allow, spiritual people can make you miss God easier. Yeah. People who are not so spiritual, they easily believe when you say God said. Have you observed that? I'm serious. They say, oh, God, I meant to do that. But the spiritual person can begin to say, you know, last time God spoke to me, he came by the wind. Are you sure? And things like that. There's nothing wrong with cross-checking. But when you begin to, the Bible says it is sinners that contradict. 
And he said, I may return with thee and go. My time is fast spent, so I have to close. I may return with thee and go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread or drink water with thee in the place. Same thing he said to the king. See what this man said. This is where witchcraft began. This is witchcraft. Pure witchcraft. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord. I'm going to the next. How many, how many errors have I given you? Number one error. Don't give the details of your instruction. You didn't get that? First error. Number two error. I'll tell you what the number two error is. All those things were just sub points I was giving you. That's not the, this is the next one. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord that thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again to go by the way thou camest. Next verse. It says this is where the witchcraft began. It says, and he said unto him, I am a prophet also. Let me use English word. I am a prophet also like. I am a prophet also like. This is error number two. Nobody is like you. I'm going somewhere. We can all relate, but we have different assignments and different instructions. Nobody's, no two assignments are the same. I am a prophet like you is a lie. God called me prophets to do many, many things. And they were different from each other. Praise God. Did you hear what I said? Did you hear what I said? There's nobody like you. Please, say to yourself, there's nobody like me. It's not pride. It actually makes you safe. We are different. We are different. Because if you are like me, you must follow God's instructions for me. You are not like me. See how you can solve that very fast. You are not like me. Is that okay? So it says, he said unto him, I am a prophet also like you. And I want to show you, all right, and prove to you that he wasn't really a prophet like him. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Amen. Somebody lift your hands and just give Jesus praise where you are. Praise him. Just say something beautiful to him. Hallelujah. I mean it. Say something beautiful to him. Glorify him. As we take the last leg of this teaching, just glorify him. Give him praise. Somebody minister to him. Is it difficult to minister to God? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus forever. Just let me know when we are set. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sorry for those on Facebook and Mixer. We are just making sure that we have something in place. Praise the Lord. Play for me, son. Glory to God. Amen. We worship you, Jesus. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. You are Yahweh. So let's go back. It says, and he said unto him, this is 1 Kings 13, what? I want to make sure you're following me. I'm bringing it to a close. 1 Kings 13, what? It says, and he said unto him, I'm a prophet also like you. Okay, so there are no two persons that are the same. Now this has to sink in. Nobody's like you. We don't copy and paste the instructions in the kingdom of God. Your instruction is different from my instruction. Even though we may be in the same field. There's no prophet. This is error number two. Nobody is like you and don't accept that. You can learn from people. Somebody may have a similar path like you, but nobody's like you. How do you know nobody's like you? If the person was exactly like you, you would not have had the need of you. God wouldn't have sent you. You are different. Okay? So it says, I'm a prophet like you. Okay? That's error number two. Let's go to error number three. It says, and the angel spoke unto me by the word of the Lord. Now, this is critical. Please listen to me very carefully. If you didn't get anyone, get this one. If you are not going to have, if you are not going to err, being led by the Spirit of God, you must note the pattern that God speaks to you. 
All right? Note the pattern. How does God speak to you? If you don't know the pattern. Now, let me say this. God has a pattern through which he speaks to all of us. All of us. I was speaking to someone very precious to me and he was telling me how God would speak to him. And every time he has observed that, then he will come to the pulpit. I'll come to the pulpit and say exactly what God said to him as a confirmation. Now, if he's going to succeed in the Christian faith, he has to observe. See, if you find God's pattern for speaking to you, you are blessed. Nobody will come and sway you. So if you read here, you observe. Let me show you something. Have you observed that this young prophet had a pattern through which God spoke to him? Do you know the pattern? Give me, give, give me 13.1. 1 Kings 13.1. Let me show you something. 1 Kings 13.1. It says, and behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by what? Talk to me, church. By what? This is huge. So this is the way God spoke to him. Okay. Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, the matter is confirmed. Go to verse 9. Verse 9. For so he was charged me by the... Are you following me? So he was charged me by the... Okay. Go to verse, verse 7. Verse 17. I beg your pardon. Verse 17. 17. For it was said to me by the... Have you seen that now? Take this teaching seriously. There's a pattern through which the Holy Spirit drops information in you. How do I know? God is a father. You must see God not just as God but fathers. That's why scripture says, thanks be to the God and the father of our Lord Jesus. As a father, you communicate to your children in different ways. God can't all speak to us the same way. No. No. There are major ways, just like everybody, every man, every father speaks to his student verbally. God will always give inward impressions. But the, the output or the replay or something is going to be different from us, from each other. So have you seen three things I showed you? God speaks, speaks to him by the word of the Lord. That is huge. I'll, I'll deal with that. But you see, he also made a mistake by exposing how God speaks to him. I'll tell you why. Because this, how many of you know this old prophet was lying? You know he was lying? But he lied and adopted the pattern through which God speaks to this prophet. See that very closely. He says, and he said to him, I am a prophet also as that. And an angel spoke to me by. Are you getting what I'm saying? Why do you think he used by the word of the Lord? Should I tell you it's normal? This guy was a young prophet. He was young in the prophetic ministry. So he had to make mistakes. Do you know an older prophet will not tell you that? Elijah will just come and tell you, Toss says the Lord, you will hang there and die. He told you, stay that bed, you will die. He doesn't have to tell you, he came to me in the middle of the night and tiptoed into my room. You know, many years ago, somebody finished speaking and he said, at 5 a.m., at 5 a.m., you know, 5 a.m. is when I, I just, I, I become very open in the spirit. For those of you who walk with God, you observe that there are times that, there are times in the days where you are, fresh before the Lord. So this pastor was preaching. As soon as he finished preaching, he went home to do the same routine. He could not. There was demonic interference. No sound from heaven. At the end of the day, my pastor said it was because you went to the pulpit. You went to preach in a town full of devils and you told them the moment, are you getting what I'm saying? Where you get communications. Too much details. When I heard that, I said, me, I will never say my own. So my own is not 5 a.m. Forget it. In 5 a.m. It's not 5 a.m. So even if you are flying, when you come 5 a.m., you won't say anything. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> but are you seeing this? I'm not making this up. God spoke to him by the word of the Lord, by the word of the Lord. But he said this so much that this old Abalaba prophet just said, if I, if, I, if I come to this guy by the root that God speaks with him, he may believe me. But this is also it. There's something here. That be, how many of you know that this was the devil speaking to this man? You believe that? The devil will always raise men, whether spiritual or not, to make you disobey your divine instruction. But have you observed that the devil never copyrights? Copies right. That's one thing about him. He, ne he doesn't have the capacity. He can copy, but doesn't copyright. Check it. Whenever the enemy is quoting scripture in the Bible, he must miss one thing. Why? Because the truth is not in him. And the word of God is truth. There's no capacity in him to speak truth. How do I know he didn't copyright? 
the old young prophet gets his divine direction by the word of the Lord. He said an angel by the word of the Lord. There are two different things. Because the word of the Lord can come by an angel, can come by a donkey, and come by a man. Even this prophet, you know when, when the devil wanted to finish this young prophet? It was this same man that the Holy Spirit came on. Right? And if you check how the Holy Spirit came on him, it came by the word of the Lord. So the word of the Lord took the man, not an angel. Are you getting what I'm saying? The word of the Lord can come via an angel, can come via the many wings. So he said an angel by the word of the Lord. That was really not the way God spoke to the young prophet. Are you getting me? The young prophet got communications by the Holy Spirit by the word of the Lord, not an angel bringing the word of the Lord because the word of the Lord can come anyhow. So watch the pattern through which God speaks to you. When somebody just meets you on the road and says, ah, he rings bell, ah, ah. Auntie, your husband's name is John. Book home. And you're like, anybody can be John, you're working. And he says, your husband is about to sign a contract. Then you stop because he's really about to sign a contract. Then you slow down. And you behave like, you know, you're waiting for somebody just to hear what he say. Tell him not to sign it. He should not sign it. And the guy's in the bread and all that. Listen to me. And I've had, we've had many women who now fall prey to that. That doesn't mean it's God. Is it the pattern through which God speaks to you? God does not behave like a vagabond that will just meet somebody on the street that you know nothing about, knows nothing about you, and begins to give you the detail of your life. The instruction of the sheep comes from the shepherd. Relationship. Never forget that. Not from a stroller. God will bypass your pastor, bypass your uncle, bypass your mother, bypass your biological father bypass your spouse and then bring one charlatan from the bush and he's ringing bell that doesn't mean it's correct so observe the pattern to which god speaks to you i've had all kind of instructions <laughs> you know i've just thought for 30 minutes Sh should i can i take five more minutes thank you very much this is a very spiritual church thank you very much <laughs> my spiritual father was holding his conference. It was a world conference. So he brought a man of God that he respected. And the man got to the pulpit. I said this during one of the morning devotions. And he said, listen to this illustration very well. Because some of you have been here. Reverend Arego, the Lord says you should relocate to Lagos. Then he was not at Oshobo, he was at Leisha. And if you've listened to my pastor, you know that the, Lord, the word of the Lord is with him. So they said, ah, you can't have this teaching anointing. I believe he's an apostolic teacher to the body. All right? Also in the prophetic dimension. You can't have this anointing and be in Elisha. No, it's Lagos. So he prophesied it. Ah, my pastor's elder sister was in the congregation. She was happy. She jumped out. She had been telling him, come to Lagos. What are you doing in this bush? Come to Lagos. So the man now said, now I'm going to receive an offering for those of you who want to sow. For reverend to go to Lagos. The mother came, his elder sister came with her seed and came with her, their mother's seed. She sold for her mother. You see, not every assistance is of God. Not everyone. There are gifts to refuse, sir. There are gifts you refuse. Maybe if they were raising offering for ministry there, they won't come out. She came out with her seed and sold in faith for the mother. And then told my pastor, a flat will be waiting for you fully furnished. You, have not, you don't know that the enemy can sponsor you out of God's will for your life. You think, uh, you, think you know, this generation is all so much into money that they think once money is involved, it's God's will. The devil can give you a job to take you out of purpose. So he went there. He said, as they were saying it, you must know the way God speaks to you. This was a respectful man of God, respectable man of God, who bringing the word of the Lord on his convention pulpit. But my pastor said, immediately the man said it, his spirit went flat. That everything about the conference just died. And he knew it was not God. Oh God. He, he said that he just knew it wasn't God. And then at the end of the day, he had to, my pastor is very strong. He had to cut his relationship with that man. He said, I respect you very much, but I want to allow you to take the place of the Holy Spirit in my life. And then said from today, amen. Praise God. See the way some of you are looking at me. There may be some people you have to cut like that too. Amen. So, so I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you just got me. I don't know why people get bothered though. As if you didn't do anything wrong, when people leave your life, why are you bothered? I've observed, you see, somebody say he stopped calling me, he stopped. Oga, 
He taketh away the first. Do you understand? If God shows you the future, you'll be thanking God that they left. When, he, when Lot left, he said, now nah, lift up your eyes. People will live your life, stop talking to you, stop, and you are, you are not sleeping. They are eating and you are having the gym. How? Not that you did something wrong. You were just there. Do you know God knows how to kill relationships naturally? So why are you bothering yourself? Anyway, so he told the guy by himself, oh, he didn't wait for God to do it. Oh God, his relationship is over. At the end of the day, this is why I said this. He will not gather that many of his pastor friends who love him. Another thing is that God, see, people can love you out of destiny. They loved him. You know what they said? They now told the man of God before he went to preach that Reverend Agu respects you. Tell him to go to Lagos. The man now came like this old prophet and said, God told him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But he picked the error because he knew the pattern through which God speaks to him. He said, today I'm in Oshobo and see what is happening. He said to me one day, he said, Tony, I'm in the hinterlands, pastor. Few people do what we do from this village. All over the world. First pastor I know that is 24 hours on the internet. As you are speaking now, you can watch him. Midnight, you can wake up and watch him. Audio and video. If you don't know what that takes, his resources are. From the place, God, God told him, stay in Oshobo, don't go anywhere. When they came to preach in Lagos recently, I went there physically. He said, oh, many of you are praying that I relocate to Lagos. It's not going to happen. He said, you need to, and he was not going to say, you need to stop that prayer point. These are, have you observed something about the old timers? They don't play with their instructions. They guard their instructions. They don't copy and paste like we copy and paste. They don't do that. How close, my time is fast, right? So you can pick when a leading is not correct by the pattern through which God speaks to you. You know some of you, if you had seen that seed being sown, you would have relocated. I commend this young prophet. The king gave him money. He says, I was, I'm going to give you a reward. He said, no. Do you know that money can change your instruction? It was said that when Jesus rose from the grave, the priest went and told some people, don't tell people that he is risen. So money can change a message. Cash. You've not seen cash change things in ministry. That's why I tell people, I've said it from the beginning till now. There's no financial pillar in this church. The only pillar in this church is Jesus. The person you are calling financial pillar today cannot be in church tomorrow. So what happens? The ministry closes? No, Jesus is the financial pillar of this church. And I've seen him over and over and over and over again. Raise people who, didn't, who don't look like it. You know, somebody called me one day and he said, ah, well, he was a pastor. He said, ah, man of God, man of God. <sighs> Your church, you know, the, the kind of things you people do. And I'm wondering because I'm far above this one in my mind. What, what are the things? The kind of things you people do. And, ah, you know, ah. So he said, he knew some people. He said, I'm sure this person is, is, a, is, a, is a good giver and tither to the work. I'm sure they are faithful because the things you are doing, I laugh. I said, that person you are, you are talking about has not given for six months. It is the persons that he doesn't believe that give, that give. I know what I'm saying. The people that worship us, that you think and are the ones God, you know why God is doing that? So that no man takes his glory. Not in church work. Especially when I'm the pastor. Shall. So you can see the reward and change your message. One of the things growing up I learned from the ministries of the people who went before us, I learned from their mistakes. Once somebody has cash, the person begins to sit in front as a deacon. I vowed it will never happen. You are, oh God, help me. <laughs> you know, I do my work as I'm instructed. I didn't know that some young people came to church, they were zealous. I'm saying this for the first time. It's not everything we say. And they were waiting for me to ordain them after one year. You will wait. Ordain who? We don't ordain bastards. I said spiritual bastards. We don't do that. We ordain sons. And a son has what? Abba. Pastor Paul one day came to the pulpit because people, I didn't know that people come to church to be ordained. I didn't know. One day Pastor Paul just came and said, look, you are looking to preach on this pulpit? You know, he said, until you have cleaned within the pews for years, you are not coming here. 
to even say hallelujah. Somebody said, why is he doing that? That is how God raised him to. We carry generator on our head. We did things. You come and say, one day, took me nine years. Nine years to ordain my wife into ministry before your eyes. Nine years. My pastor told me, why did you do that? That took too, too long. Nine years. Then you come two years. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I know the pastor can do this in this church, in the future. And they are going through my different training. Mm, be trained. I want to be sure that when, oh God, why am I doing these things today? I want to be sure that, praise God. You know, there are people I can tell to stand here and I'll go and do what I'm doing. They've been raised under my loins. They know what to say and what not to say. We have never had comedians in this church until Jesus returns. You can't come on my pulpit. No, don't get me wrong. I have mentors who do it. Well, mentor from a distance. Please, I'm talking about divine direction. He has given me no such commandment. Is it wrong? No, they can do it in birthday parties, but on the pulpit of Jesus, on a Sunday morning. So this is what I think about. Imagine the early church in Acts of the Apostles. They came to church, and after praise and worship, they brought a comedian. Did you see them do that? Think, just imagine. Peter, Paul, all of them were in church, and there's time for comedy. There was no time for comedy. It was prayer. It was the miraculous. It was the teaching of God's word, and that's the, the pattern I adopt. Okay? So one day, one time, I think, I forgot in Parisona, there's one young guy that came. I don't know, as youths were, singles were having something. So they brought one guy. I forgot him whether it's comedy. First thing he said, ah! When I they come, I don't know, said they're all small like this. He wanted to be funny. It was somebody in the congregation that said, ah, they know I won't take it. I was outside. The person is here, maybe she has forgotten. She's laughing now. It was that person that picked it up. I said, that's ministry. You raise people to the point in ministry where they carry your DNA. And I told them to off that mic very fast. So from that day I learned, nobody climbs this pulpit, whether you're singing or saying amen, without me knowing. We don't do comedy here. That's the instruction for God. No, there's no church comedy. After service, we do comedy. Don't we laugh within ourselves? There's no need for that. This is the way my pastor puts it. A comedian comes to the pulpit and he says, Ha! Pastor, pastor. And everybody's laughing. Did your pastor find? Ah! One looked at the pastor's wife. He says, Yes, you fresh like today's bread. That's an insult. That's an insult. People laughed, but I cried inside. See, as pastor wife, all this pastor wife, you find you're fresh like today's bread. The pastor's wife, like today's bread. Then you will go and watch it and come and tell me, Pastor, let's be doing comedy night. Comedy will do you something there. I said every time, know where you are. We have fun in this church. People are laughing now. We don't, we are not stiff here. Yeah. But comedy from this pulpit, mba. And then you say to the pastor, I've seen it happen. Pastor, when pastor come, begin prophesying like this. You will make it. Ah, as pastor, they pray like this, pray like this. Pray like this. And then everybody laughs. Then the pastor now comes to the pulpit and the anointing comes on him. And he begins to do that same thing the guy just laughed about. And the people cannot receive it because they've laughed it out. So when the pastor begins to do it, they remember what the comedian said. And they begin to laugh. When the pastor is prophesying, they are next to the nurse that. <laughs> I don't know why I said that one. In case you are coming to meet me for comedy, don't try it. Do I watch comedy? Personally, I'm not that type, but if I meet anything that makes me laugh, I laugh. Hallelujah. I think I'm a comedian myself, self. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Abby, don't you people laugh when I teach? Are you not laughing now? That's comedy. Let you refresh your spirit. Let me, this thing is doing me one kind. I'll, 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 I'll close. I'll just read it up now. Okay, so, so know God's pattern for you, okay? Um, follow God's pattern for you. Number two, please do not. I'll close with this. Do you observe that? Let's close with this. Let me close my Bible so you know I'm close. Do you observe that? No, let's keep reading. 
Let's read this one. And he said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee. Abba. This lie is legendary. This is lie from experience. The angel of the Lord said, Come back with me to the house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto me. Sisters, when he says, God said I should marry you, tell him that we have received the spirit of adoption wherewith we cry Abba and Abba will speak to his child you too we hear and please the reverse is the case some ladies too go about saying God said I saw you I saw you I saw you with our babies like a father <laughs> okay do you know, it was later I realized, I did not tell my wife God said once, even though God said. This God said, God said thing is a sign that he didn't say. Because when God speaks, everything hears. If he says it, ha-ha. Ah, ah. When she sees you like this, you will, ha-ha. Ah, ah. When Eve said this, do you notice something about God? He didn't tell Eve, God, that Eve is his wife. He created Eve. Adam went and he saw many things. When he saw this one, he said, ah! This is, he's the one that I recognize. God helped me in a relationship these past two weeks. So, so, so he went back with him and did eat and drink, so he did eat bread in his hand and drank water. Let's close with this. He says, and it came to pass as they sat at the table, the word of the Lord came unto him, unto the prophet that brought him. I think this is the most, this is the saddest part of this. The same mouth that said, you don't have to relocate, go to Canada. Sorry, you don't have to stay in Nigeria, go to Canada. It's the same mouth that in 10, 15 years you come back from Canada frustrated. We say you're a stupid person. How can you leave your home country? The same mouth. You're following what people say. Follow what God says. Oh. People are fluid in nature. It's the human nature. I don't do things by people. Oh. I love people. I'm committed to people. All of you know I'm committed to you 100%. But I follow God. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, this is the same prophet that distracted him. <laughs> Thus says the Lord, for as much as thou hast disobeyed, God is a very, God knows how to humble you. The same mouth that said, come, God is using the same mouth to speak back to you. He says, for as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord and hast not kept the commandment which thy God commanded in next verse. Please help me first. It says, and and came us back and has eaten bread and drunk water in the place of which the Lord say to thee, of which the Lord did say to thee, eat no bread and drink no water. Thy carcass, watch this now, shall not come unto the sepulchre of thy fathers. I'll tell you what this guy thought about this. He thought it was in the future. Yeah, that's what God taught me as I studied the word. And you can hear the witness in your spirit. Look at it very well. There's a witness. When somebody says, ah, you won't be buried in your father's grave, you will think, well, like the king said, as long as you don't bring it in my day, Lord, bring it in my children's day, foolish king. So he felt it was in the future. Because when you say your father, you won't sleep with your fathers. I mean, that means when you die, you will not be buried with your fathers. He didn't know that God was not playing. Next verse. And it came to pass after he has eaten bread and after he had drunk, that he saddled for him the ass to which the prophet whom he had brought back so after that prophetic word, he took on the religion and was going where he was going. Because he thought it was a future thing, actually. And when he was gone, a lion met him. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. The lion met him, by the way, and slew him. This is where I'm going. This is the last point. And his carcass was cast in the way. And the ass stood by it. And the lion also stood by the carcass. Stop. Can a lion stay side by side with an ass and the ass is intact? Think about it. Please, let me, if you think it's possible, let me see your hand. He killed a human being. He's seen another fresh meat. He's killing the human being. He's not even, after killing the human being, he's not, he's not scouting for the parts of the body. He just stands. That's miracle number one. When the lion kills, they are there. Taking it in now. He kills the guy because the assignment from Yehovah was to kill. Not to eat. 
killed him, stood, be, stood beside him. And then an ass that didn't kill the guy came and stood. Was that the prophetic word? I'll tell you what that means. So I began to ask God, there must be something here. I know you don't play around with pictures. Why should a lion stand beside the disobedient prophet? Between the um, disobedient prophet and beside the ass. And the lion is not eating the donkey. And the donkey is not afraid of the lion. He said to me, now hear this, hear this. A prophetic picture that even animals carry out divine instructions more than human beings. Even inanimate things can carry out divine instructions. That might, the instruction was killed and it stand. They were obeying divine instruction beside a man that disobeyed divine instruction. May God not call animals to replace you. Because that was a replacement. Those two animals, because God had spoken, had to align with the prophetic word. But the one who was disobedient was fallen. Please go home and read this text again and let the Holy Spirit give you your own interpretation where it will be scriptural. This text again. Did you get something this morning? Stand to your feet. Play for me, son. I told you this eight weeks is a school. Give him praise and give him glory. Because we're going to be making a prayer this morning, but just give him praise first. Give him praise. Is anybody giving him praise? Lift your voice and give him praise. Worship him. Thank him for his word. Hallelujah. You have done it all for me. That could not hold you down. You are the in majesty as you worship him he's taking care of errors in your life you are the reason king everybody sing hallelujah hallelujah you have won the victory one more time, sing hallelujah, come on. Hallelujah, done it all. You have done it all for me. Death could not hold you, come on. Death could not hold you down. You are the Seated in majesty, you are the reason, Lord. I speak to those online and on ground, on site, in the name of Jesus, for everyone who has been harassed by arrows in the school of divine direction. Whatever mistake you have made, whatever wrong step you have taken today, I ask for mercy. You won't fall by the wayside because of disobedience. In the name of Jesus, I cause the tendency for jealousy and competition. I decree that you will abide in the calling where which you are called. In the name of Jesus Christ, and I declare, because there is hope for a tree, that if it be cut down at the center of what I will sprout off again, I don't care how bad the mistake is. From now, you begin to get accuracy. And because of accuracy, everything springs back to life. I declare that you are blossoming in every aspect. You have missed it in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Give Jesus a praise if you can. Hallelujah. Glory to the head of the church.